Okay, you read the title, you clicked the video. Uh, this is something that everybody has opinions about, and this is my opinion. Now, I don't think that I am elite, but I will assure you that being Jerry's Autorama is my family business, I've been around this stuff a long time. I've been across this galaxy, I've started a lot of crazy stuff, but nothing to me to believe that there, there is one great force that rules everything. Totally butchered that. Um, but in my experience, I feel that there are items out there that if you want to do watercolor, from beginner to advanced, there are just good tools to have on hand, things that you'll need um, that you might not think about. Like everybody thinks like, well, okay, I'll need water. I'm not going to come up here and tell you, you need water for watercolor. That's a douchey thing to say. Uh, no, we should talk about things that I think that you might not have thought about. You may have, you may have these, you may not. We don't know. Let's get to it, okay? Stop dawdling. <laughs> The first thing I want to talk to you that you absolutely need for more than one reason is this right here, this little beauty, okay? Have you been drinking paint water again? You look like you have. I know I have. I had two this morning, okay? Actually, that's a lie because I fixed it. If you've been drinking paint water, this is, this is the age-old problem, you know, paint water, drinking water, paint water, drinking water. If you are using a single vessel, or vessel if you're from Russia, I guess, if you're using a single vessel, what we're going to do is talk about avoiding drinking paint water, but more than that, a good tool that any watercolor artist needs is a water basin. I told you we're not talking about water, but look right here. With two separate, or actually in this case, three separate water containing areas. All right. Why is this important? Besides the fact that you are less likely to try to drink this, because I've actually tried and it, you notice. Um, when you're mixing colors, or you're not mixing colors, you're trying to go into a clean color, the water being the vehicle that your paint is traveling in, if it's tainted with a dirty paint water, it's going to muddy up your colors. This is designed to keep things clean. So if you've ever watched me use one of these in a video before, or you're not familiar, I use this large brush area to do my initial rinse, okay? I get all the schmutz off at the bottom there, okay? You hear that? That's the sound of cleaning. Makes me happy, actually. Will, come rub this. Yeah. Um, then, all right, you know, appropriate. That was not appropriate, okay? No condom jokes during my videos. Actually, there was a condom joke in my very first video. <laughs> um, and then up here, I use these... Uh, for the clean water that I pull from, okay? Um, if I wanted to go an extra step and be extra OCD, which I'm known to do, uh, I might go so far as to clean the brush in this one, then give it a quick rinse in that, dab it off, and then use this just as that clean water with a clean brush for absolute purification, purity, uh, beautification. So this is Jerry's water basin, um, water brush washer and basin. It also, I guess, I might as well show you, has this palette inside and uh, this little rubber lid, um, and it closes nicely. And actually, what I like about this is it's not hermetically sealed. Uh, that means airtight for those that will fall out. But when I fill it with water and I put this on top, the water doesn't splash around when I'm going from the sink to my uh, studio space. Water basin, separate containers, dirty water, clean water. Don't think drinking water, paint water, okay? We're going to push that problem aside. Think dirty water, clean water, because you need to mix paints uh, and, and you need to use the cleanest water possible if you want to achieve the cleanest colors possible. Um, that's, just, that's just some of the best advice I can give you about water. It's, it's, a, it's a quick, simple thing that can dramatically increase the quality of your work if you have not been doing that. Um, I understand that it's not always possible, especially if you get into some of these things that we're going to talk about later, like travel stuff, but I have ways around that too. I'm very clever. I'm very clever. So I guess we should move on. So another tool that I think that any watercolor artist should have, because watercolor artists, in my opinion, have the greatest advantage of any painting medium outside of maybe if you like to just draw. Um, you don't need a huge production to paint, especially on the go, okay? I have watercolor sets and, and, and books everywhere in my backpack when I travel, one at my home office, one at my office here in the studio. Uh, I keep these things around, okay? Um, I will sometimes bring them with me if I have a backpack just around town, but I usually don't unless I, 
anyway, traveling, it's great to have. So having a to-go kit, all right, is so important. Now, I'm just going to show you this. So this is the Reflections watercolor um, journal. It's really nice, cold-pressed paper. It's got that little fancy pocket in the back for your little, you know, things that you put in there. And it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't be, have to be the highest quality. It's just so that you can get the art out. You know, you got to get that art out or it backs up and you get blue art. Um, so here's a little set, this Marie's set. Um, and you can see that it was swatched. You know, it comes with a little bit of everything that you need. Also, when I mentioned earlier about um, not having a water container, having a water brush, let me hold that down there, Will. Uh, having a water brush uh, is great because what you can do is blot it on a paper towel, or I guess you can blot it on this little sea sponge this set comes with, um, and that will help keep your colors clean because the water inside the brush uh, should not be getting dirty. If it is, you probably have some kind of backwards plumbing situation going on. But if you're watching this artist problem, most likely it's because you love me. Like we've been around together a while and I love you, uh, if I'm allowed to say that. If I'm not, I don't. We did a video a while back uh, where I went through uh, my stocking stuffers, you know, some of the things that I think you should have. And look, I'm biased, but if you want an It's Mike Not Jerry travel watercolor set, all right, it's a big one, all right? No, but it's great, all right? I love this thing. It was actually perfect as a stocking stuffer because when we put it in the stocking, the Jerry's Autorama tag was out there. But let me just show you what I put in this set. You don't need to keep it in this bag. I just thought it was funny that it all fit in there perfectly. But super black, waterproof um, pen set of three. This is the lettering and calligraphy set. I just like the different line weights that you can get with it, uh, with a chiseled edge and brush tip. Really convenient, small, compact. These things are bloody amazing. Um, fan pan set. It has that little sponge to, uh, sponge to blot your um, water brush that's also included. L tons of colors. If you have not watched the unboxing swatch video we did on the fan pan set, um, you really are cheating yourself in terms of seeing just um, how amazingly pigmented these very shallow pans are. It blew my mind. I'm, I'm still a little blown, to be honest with you. Don't worry, we'll work it out later. Stop it. Um, and then finally, this is a newer item for us, and I just, I just love them, so I put them in my, because, like, these books are, are really cool, but I like to take it up, what was it that Emerald would say? Another notch! Bam! Um, these were awesome, and I might not travel with this tin, but if you want to travel watercolor set, and you don't like buying gifts for people, because I know I'm cheap as hell, this is perfect. These are watercolor postcards. Um, and they're, you know, pre-done, so you can add your stamp, write your little note, and um, their address, then you can mail them an original piece of art. How crazy is that? You can mail them an original piece of art, or, you know, hey, just give it to them, and then you don't have to buy snow globes. I'm sorry for anybody in the snow globe business. That might have, I might have completely put the snow globes out of business for any artist that would have bought one, because now they, can, they know, why pay for that? Just buy this set, this It's Mike Not Jerry art supply watercolor travel set. It's everything the body needs. And they can also, it's a gift that keeps on giving because they don't have to buy and schlep around snow globes. It's perfect. Honestly, what, what am I biased? Of course. And a set like that is so important. I just put it all away, but now I'm going to talk about it. And a set like this is also important so that you're always in practice. You know, that's another advantage of watercolor artist has and needs because as I've said before, watercolor is the easiest medium to get started in, but it is the hardest to master. So having something that you can take with you means you're always practicing, you're getting closer to that 10,000 hour mark, maybe you're on to 20,000 hours, I don't know how busy you are. I, I think I'm on 11. This is getting a little bit more into the a tool that an advanced artist should have. Uh, it might also be a little bit of a, a, a duh kind of thing for some of them, but I need you to calm down because there are beginners here that want to get to your level, so everybody just be nice, play nice please, sit. Susan, sit. Somebody named Susan's really crazy. <laughs> what does he mean? This is a Lucas empty half pan set, okay? Now, this is a tool any artist should have. The case that I'm showing you is my preference, okay? This is my opinion, this is my preference. This is if you wanna know me, and if you think that you might like something, or if you don't like something, please, I always say, I welcome any comments in the comments. Sometimes it gets some really weird stuff, and I love to respond to those. Keep that in mind. Um, as you progress, now, Lucas watercolors are great. I have no problem with Lucas watercolors. I actually, two out of my sets are, are this filled with Lucas watercolor. 
But what I've found through my many years of marketing research is as artists get more experience with watercolor, out of any other medium, oil, acrylic, uh, colored pencil, watercolor artists are the most brand specific to a color, not a brand. So like you might be an oil painting artist and you're like, well, I use Winsor & Newton, okay? Or you might be any artist and say that. Um, or you might say, hey, I love the um, golden acrylics. You know, I love the uh, Lucas 1862 oils. You are very loyal to that. But watercolor artists are a little different. They might have a majority rule, so maybe they want six or seven colors for the Lucas, but they'll find that there's like this cobalt teal that's made by, I don't know, M. Graham, uh, Turner. I mean, this color that's just so perfect to them that they want to be able to fill their palette with their colors. And these are actual, actual half pans that you can fill in here to make your own custom set. So having an empty set that you can customize with your palette as you figure out these colors, because what happens is over the years, you, they're out of stock of, you know, not at a Jerry's, we're always in stock, baby. That's, that's number one, okay? But if you're at one of these other places, all right, and they don't have your color and you switch to another brand, that might be an opportunity to learn whether you really hate or really love that color in another brand. That's how over time, plus people give you gifts because they don't even ask what kind of watercolors you like, you try other things, you, you figure out your palette. That's your personal preference of not only the colors in the palette, but the brands they come in. That's a watercolor artist's unique thing. They like different colors and different brands. And that's okay too. I like that. Um, I just personally really think that this tin's well designed. It's a nice um, matte metal. There's that little thumb hole there at the bottom if you want to hold it, um, which I do sometimes. But most of the time, to be honest, I just, because I lie to you the rest of the time, but most of the time I lay it flat. Uh, I've got two large mixing areas there. I can use this mixing area down here. Um, the other thing that I've done on one of my personal ones is I, because I always like to swatch out the colors on the paper I'm going to be using. So I like will take that uh, watercolor journal, tear out a piece of paper, cut it up, and then I'll just kind of like tape it here and swatch it on there. So I can always kind of reference my colors like that. Does that make sense? Maybe it doesn't. Um, hopefully it does. And then if you want more than 12 colors, this is actually a set we just had around the studio just to show you. You can get this in an empty. This is it, you know, obviously used and full of color, but um, you can get up to 24. And the nice thing about these sets is, let's say that there's a color that you use a lot of. You use that ultramarine blue, man, you beat that thing like a dead horse. You keep going for that ultramarine blue. You keep running that ultramarine blue. Don't put in beat a dead horse. That is so horrible. Like it's dead, but still leave it alone. Like, why is it dead? Is it your fault? Were you live beating a horse? Yeah, things just got real deep. Um, pans are not expensive without paint in them. They're really not. So you can remove two of these pans and put in a whole pan. Or guess what? Fill two up with ultramarine blue. Genius. Um, and obviously you'll have more room to do that. This will hold 24 half pans or I believe, I guess 12 whole pans. And you can assort them uh, however you want that. Isn't that nice? Choices. A lot of you beginners out there might not know about this next thing I'm going to talk about. A lot of you advanced artists out there might know very well about what I'm about to talk about, but choose not to use it. It's a mistake, all right? I want to get on a, do we have a soapbox I can stand? I want to talk about watercolor blocks. I love these things. So regardless of being a beginner or advanced, I am going to suggest, in my opinion, you invest in watercolor blocks. Not as all your watercolor paper necessarily, especially if you advanced artists. Now you advanced artists out there probably have your own system. You might choose to tape down your paper or you just go with 300 pound really thick paper and don't even worry about taping it down. You probably have a system. However, usually with these systems, uh, there's some prep time. There's a little bit of prep. And what I like about blocks is that the prep time has been reduced to a minimum, okay? So what is, for you beginner artists out there, a watercolor block? A watercolor block is like a pad of watercolor paper, but unlike a sketchbook or mixed media journal, okay, this is real watercolor paper, but it has been taped down on all the sides, okay? You see how I can't, I can't flip through that? Are you seeing the flick? Why is that important? Because watercolor paper can buckle, especially if you use a lot of water. Um, but even if you don't use a lot of water, just a little bit of water can buckle watercolor paper. So this is what you do. Nothing. It's done. You leave it there. You do your art. You let it dry. 
You have to wait for it to dry, and then you'll find that uh, somewhere on your block, so I think, for example, um, here, it's just this corner, okay? You can just start to take a, a palette knife or uh, some kind of knife and slowly release the paper after it's dried. Okay, this is really big. Uh, you want to wait till after it's dried because if you remove it while it's still wet, it will buckle. Okay, the whole point is avoiding that buckling because I don't like buckled paper. It's really hard working on a U-shaped piece of watercolor paper. A U-sheep. I don't know what a U-sheep is, but it does this. Um, it's very hard to work on a U-shaped piece of watercolor paper, and it's annoying too. And you wind up putting paper weights down. So, if so, why would this be important if you're an advanced artist? Man, just convenience. Okay, like you don't always know when that inspiration is going to hit. So if you travel or, or, or you have in your studio just something, look, if you want to take the time to pre-stretch paper so it's ready to go when that inspiration hits, do it. You know, I'm not sitting here saying that this is the end all. Again, this is opinion. In my opinion, having the convenience of a block for any artist uh, really can lend itself to just, you know, being able to jump on that creative um, bandwagon when it hits you, okay? And beginners, it's not always the easiest learning how to stretch watercolor paper. Uh, you know, full disclosure, I probably am doing it a little wrong still. Like, it, it, it's, a, it's like, we should, artist problems, it's Mike, not Jerry, doesn't know how to do something. <laughs> like, real. Whole new series of just like how much people don't realize I don't know what to, how to do it. Um, but uh, watercolor blocks are convenient. They have a lot of the leading national brands of paper that you might be using. They are... Um, you know, available in all different sizes, so just get what suits your needs. Any artist, this is, this is just beyond watercolor artists, okay, uh, any painter uses brushes. And I will say that watercolor brushes, uh, especially those Kalinske hair sable brushes, are expensive. They're an investment. So it's very important that you invest in a product to clean them properly, okay? There are a lot of different brush soaps out there. Now up here I have my favorite, which is Chelsea Classical Studios Lavender and Olive Oil Soap. It cleans the brush, it conditions the brush, it helps it keep its shape. These brushes can get very expensive. And believe me, even myself, who, you know, essentially can walk into any Jerry's or I'm and just grab something off the shelf. <laughs> Who's going to say anything to me, right? Um, I still clean the brushes. I, I do. Because, first of all, I don't like being wasteful. And second of all, it, it's not that hard. It, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful uh, soap. It smells nice. It cleans the brush as well and it keeps the shape, and uh, obviously, um, you know, I'm being a little tongue-in-cheek, but I highly recommend, if you're going to invest in brushes, invest in a good brush cleaner, something that will uh, help preserve and lengthen the life of your brush so that you're not constantly buying brushes. It's a good tip. Again, rhetorical, Will, don't need you to answer. It's good for your skin. A lot of, uh, you know, soap can be very drying, so I've also noticed that when I clean the brushes, my hands are a little softer, and that's very important to people, apparently. Um, but, you know, especially when it's like colder months and your skin's like, you know, can crack or whatever, um, it's nice to have something that's a little bit conditioning. Conditions your brushes, conditions your hands, hopefully it can condition my body. When we're dealing with these metal tins, there is another option. Now this is not a, I, I like these for travel. This is more for, well this is actually literally what I keep in the studio at my house. Um, because it's not quite as small as these, but I just love these Magello palettes, okay? They seal, you've got a ton of color wells, but the real magic of this palette is, is this thing. Um, the way the color's set up on this, I feel looks a lot more similar to how it looks on the page than it does in other types of palettes when I'm mixing my colors. I don't know if this is like that bulletproof glass or whatever it is, bulletproof glass. Um, it, 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 it doesn't pool up, it doesn't beat up, it's really great for mixing and it cleans easy. Uh, and then you have two traditional wells down here. Um, and what I also like to do uh, when I want to keep my paints wet, now you don't want to do this for long term storage, but if you take a little bit of sponge, so just cut the corner off a of sponge, dampen that, put it in here and seal it, it will keep, if you squeeze two watercolors out, it will keep them moist in there longer. Um, but if you just put it on a shelf and forget it for a couple months, it might mold. So only do that if it's, you know, obviously if you care enough to keep them wet, you'll probably be using it frequently and cleaning that out, but it's just another little great thing. Um, so I wanted to just mention that when we were talking about these kits, because obviously when you're dealing with uh, a palette like this, you can absolutely uh, collect any assortment of colors that you want. Um, doesn't even say a brand of paint on it. Uh, 
It just is watercolor palette. So, huh, uh, that's what you need. Um, I, I really like this palette. Um, there are, you know, some artists work with much bigger spreads um, that have much bigger areas. I am kind of limited on space, uh, spaces at a premium, uh, especially, you know, with kids and stuff. So uh, it just depends on the artist. I actually don't have room for this on this table. <laughs> it's so big. Um, now, I do want to talk about one last thing. You know, we, we were talking earlier about this um, Magello palette and actually even, even this guy. All right, this is not something, and if you want to know what you need, you can stop watching now. This is something that I don't believe everybody needs, but I need it. Oh, I need it so bad. Well, you know how bad I need it, right? Yeah, all right, we'll talk later. I have obsessive compulsive disorder. I've discussed it in some of my other videos. I think I probably already discussed it on this video. I'm very proud of it, apparently. Unlike some people that can do their watercolor painting and leave it like this, I can't. I, this, this would kill me. I, I would literally die. Um, so I need to clean it constantly. But even with constant cleaning, there are certain colors that are staining, that will leave a stain even after I've wiped it clean, and it drives me nuts. So Turner's Palette Cleaner is designed to help get those stains up and off your palette, which is really great. Um, you basically you dry brush some of this on. Oh, it's so hard. This is a new one. Oh, I'm so strong. I was gonna. Uh, all right. It's just a, um, a a viscous fluid in there. Okay. Just put that over uh, your dried uh, paint or your dried stain. Let it sit, and then with a dry cloth, wipe it out. Now. A mistake some people might make is wiping it up with a wet washcloth. You don't want to do that. You want to let this soak in and penetrate that stain and then wipe it dry. Just leave it on there a couple of minutes and it will come up, okay? So not for everybody's needs, um, but uh, definitely suits my needs. And uh, it's really all about me in anything that I do. Will knows that. So what are your must-haves? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? I, I, I want you to put in the comments below uh, things that I might have left out that you have to have, that you think other people must have. This is all opinion based, so share the wealth down below. You might absolutely think that blocks are a waste of life. That's your opinion. You're entitled to it. Put it down below. I like to hear what people have to say. It's my little way of trying to understand you better. It's a way that we can connect on an emotional level. Obviously, we've talked about a lot of watercolor tools here, a lot of specialty tools. You know, this transcends uh, any medium that, you know, you need a brush for. But if you're looking for one more really important tool, follow me on Instagram at MikeNotJerry, where I will continue to be a tool for your life as I am a tool for everybody I work with. Um, in fact, I've been, I've been referred to as a tool by many people, and I appreciate that. So I'd like to be a tool for you. You'll be a tool for me. It'll be fun. Jump on on there. See what's going on. Might not be anything, but it's usually something. Isn't that exciting? Regardless of beginner or advanced, I really think that you should consider this item, which is a watercolor block. Oh! <laughs> well. <laughs> Everything was going so smoothly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, regardless of being a beginner or advanced, 